Navid is Akansha Jha, who has just interned at Microsoft as an SW intern, and she is here to share her interview experience with us. So thanks for joining in today, Akansha. Uh, let's quickly start. Can you introduce yourself briefly? Yeah, yeah, sure. Um, hi, Shreya, and to all the viewers, I am Akansha Jha, an information technology final year student at Indira Gandhi Delhi Technical University. Uh, it's in Delhi. I interned as a software engineer at Microsoft this year for two months. Um, other than that, I have also won NetApp Women Innovation, and uh, I'm also a beta so- Microsoft Learn Student Ambassador. So yeah, that's about me and my achievements of a bit. Okay, so uh, let's start with uh, our sections. So uh, how did you find this uh, hiring opportunity first, please? Um, I found out about the hiring opportunity through our campus recruitment program. Microsoft visits our campus each year for hiring. So yeah, I was eagerly anticipating their visit last time uh, as well. So yeah, that's how I got to know about the opportunity. Uh, it was an on-campus. Uh, it was an on-campus opportunity, and yeah, we were informed via the mails that yeah, Microsoft is here for recruitment. Okay. And uh, what qualifications or skills does Microsoft expect an SW intern? Okay, so the first of all, uh, the first step that uh, they t- told us about was a resume shortlisting, which were basically based upon the uh, CGPA cutoff. We were having uh, a cutoff of about, I guess, um, seven CGPA. So yes, you have to maintain a minimum of seven CGPA during your uh, first and second years, because uh, that's when Microsoft or any other big companies uh, come for the internship opportunities. Uh, after you complete your second year, uh, during the break of uh, second year, third year, that's when the companies with it. So yeah. Uh, make sure that you have are uh, you are having a good CGPA maintained in your college at least seven. So basically, you have to maintain your CGPA to be eligible to sit for big companies like Microsoft. Yeah, exactly. If you are not having uh, the cut off CGPA, then interview is interview and all are like very farther steps. First of all, you would not be able to even sit for the interview for the OS. So yes, please maintain a good CG in your college. Okay. Coming up to the OA pattern, so what is the OA pattern followed by Microsoft? And secondly, what topics are frequently covered in Microsoft's OA and interviews? First of all, I'll uh, answer the first part of your question that what is the OA pattern? Uh, OA pattern, when I gave my OA, it consisted, it consisted, of, uh, consisted of only two questions. Uh, one of it was uh, medium graph question and the other was easy to medium array question. So uh, based upon the experience and based upon uh, what other students have faced in their OAs, I got to know that graph question is something which is very frequent in Microsoft's uh, OAs. And other than that, you can expect question from anywhere from array strings to linked lists. So yeah, that is about how the OA questions are. Uh, then for the interview part, binary trees, linked list, uh, these are some of the major topics that Microsoft focuses upon. But yes, again, uh, when you are preparing for such big opportunities, you should be ready for all, uh, all you know, topics such as DP and uh, trials are also some uh, topics which Microsoft rarely ask, but they do. So if you ask me about the most frequent ones, then yeah, binary trees and linked lists are the ones which they ask very frequently. So summing it up, basically OA, like Microsoft mainly uh, has questions of trees and graphs in OA, while the interview process can have multiple topics and that totally depends upon the interviewer. Yes, exactly. You can never uh, guess how the interviewer's mood and how, what type of question he's going to ask. You can just look what are the most frequent and most asked questions and prepare accordingly. Uh, so yeah, that is how the process goes. Okay. And... Uh, what key sections should be highlighted in a resume that needs to be submitted for Microsoft according to you? Like what sections are very important that Microsoft will focus while they see your resume? Okay, so as I said, uh, these interviews happen when you are just when you have just finished your second year of the college. Um, so 
they don't really expect that much because you are not even having any years of experience in your resume so basically the project section is something and according to me uh, which you know stands you apart from uh, the rest of the people who are applying for the same position and same opportunity so uh, highlight your project section very well uh, give a short summary about your project whatever you did as a tech stack part and also the idea behind it uh, make sure to keep it very precise and uh, other than that also include the project link the, uh, many a times people just share the code link so interviewers or shortlisters doesn't have that much amount of time that they look that they go through the whole code you should just uh, give the link of deployed website or whatever project it is it should be uh, a good user it should be having a good user interface so yeah not just the tech and coding part of these uh, your project should be highlighted but also the user interface what one uh, would see when they uh, visit your website or whatever project is it you should be thorough with your project part basically Maybe yes exactly the they ask part as well and quite exactly they ask quite in depth about the projects you have mentioned in your resume okay so coming up to the next question i think everyone must be waiting for this question how did you prepare for this opportunity what resources did you use which platforms did you code on how did you prepare uh the platforms and resources which i used were uh, striver's sheet uh, i did uh, striver's a to a to z uh, dsa sheet I didn't complete it hundred percent, but uh, yes, I was pretty much thorough about the major questions. Uh, the rest were just a bit of tweaks to the main question only. So yes, I prepared from Striver sheet, and also other than that, I also uh, look into archives of GFG. So uh, the time when I the the time when my interview was approaching, I went to the archives of GFG. It is uh, like as Bleedcode is having that. Uh, company wise question as in its premium version but uh, then there is also gfg where you can always look for the archive question past year questions so yes these were the two platform which i followed uh, striver sheet and uh, gfg archives other than that i uh, used to practice on lead code platform like whatever questions were there in the uh, striver sheet i used to do that but then uh, also there were lead code contest bi weekly contest or something which uh, happen on lead code on a daily basis so such contest help you to be good with your speed and also enhance your uh, thinking capability so uh don't just mug up all the concepts that you are getting from uh, any sheet or any uh, youtube platform also try to look into uh, another variation of questions as well so that uh, you are not so that you don't restrict yourself to a certain type of question and uh, uh, after knowing the concept also you are, uh, then you, you know uh, like you don't you will not be able to answer you not be able to answer a certain question if you are restricting yourself to certain type of questions so yeah uh cyber sheet gfg archives lead code contest are something which helped me during my uh, preparation and might help you as well cool so uh, how many interview rounds were conducted and how would you rate the difficulty level of the questions that were asked in the interview of microsoft okay so after resume shortlisting and oa uh, we were having two rounds of uh, interviews i was having one technical and uh, one hr round but uh, i also asked my uh, other friends who were also sitting for the same opportunity they were having two technical rounds so <clears throat> basically it all depends on the interviewer who is taking your interview what type of question he or she want to ask from you um uh, coming on to the difficulty level of the questions the interview questions were a bit on a lesser difficulty side than the oa ones uh i had only i had only one technical round so it was i guess more easier for me uh, i was in uh, bombarded with another set of uh, tough questions during second round there was just uh, one technical round in which i was asked um a linked list question which would i would rate uh, medium uh, yeah easy to medium lead code level and other than that i was asked an array question which was again an easy to medium question okay and other than dsa are 
course yes fundamentals important and uh, like how can you prepare for them are they asked in the interviews uh, like what kind of weightage do they hold okay um so yeah as i asked as i said uh, second question, second round was my hr round so it was not just hr round they did ask a bit of cs4 fundamentals i was asked about uh, operating systems and uh, database management system so yes such core fundamentals that are there in your um, college curricular also plays a big role while uh, giving interviews they look you as a whole uh, you know what all you can offer dsa problem solving is something which is very uh, common these days and you cannot really you know um, show yourself different from the others just by doing dsa so uh, you have to push yourself a bit more in uh, cs core fundamentals part as well because uh, you never know what type of question is you know asked from you so yeah cs core fundamentals does play a very big role while uh, giving interviews at least for microsoft i would uh, say that you have to prepare for it and from where can we practice uh, cs core fundamental questions okay i um uh, during my college years i used to prepare it on the go only so gate smashers was one of the youtube playlist which i followed uh other than that, other than that you like just as the dsa sheet you can uh, also get the sheets for uh, these core fundamentals topic as well uh, but the sheet would contain only the major topics that are asked uh, sheets never contain like everything that is there in your course so i would suggest that whenever there is uh, a subject in your college curricular study it thoroughly and by heart so that uh, you don't have much problems later that would uh, always be easier for you but uh, even if you have uh, you know left that part and uh, you are not having that much amount of time so then you can go for uh, the major topics which are like very frequently asked in the companies so yeah the platform which i followed were as i said youtube playlist and uh, strivers also have uh, this cs core fundamental sheet so yes these were the two things which i followed basically maintain notes in college when you cover these subjects so you can you know quickly revise all these uh, subjects and then or you always have gfg and like akansha mentioned you can always refer to youtube playlist because they have great content there you can easily understand exactly exactly so coming towards the end of this section if you could give one advice to your juniors for cracking microsoft what would that be okay i'll advise that uh, start your dsa very soon don't delay it for the very last moment because uh, you cannot leave dsa at any cost you can do as much of uh, development as much of uh, core fundamentals but dsa is like the first step into the whole process you cannot leave dsa at any point dsa is something which is primary at uh, this point of time so start your dsa preparation as soon as possible because that will help you to study other topics in more depth as well so yeah that would be my advice basically you know you have to do your dsa regularly there is no exactly. escaping dsa uh, at all <laughs> do your dsa regularly because uh, even when you leave it for short span of time you will never know what is going to happen you never know that uh, you know you you will be having more difficulty in understanding certain concepts if you don't do it regularly if you do uh, topics such as dp uh, at one point of time and you start looking at dp after even you know after even two or two or three weeks then also you will feel like uh, this is something new and i haven't read it at all so that's how important regular practice of dsa is so right do very thorough regular practice of dsa be consistent with your dsa practice <laughs> exactly thank you kanchan for joining in today and sharing your valuable experience with uh, all of us i hope this really really helps all the juniors to get into microsoft and uh, you can connect with akansha uh, on linkedin and the link is mentioned in the description below so anything you would like to say at the end akansha 
yeah thank you so much shreya for having me here i hope whatever i said and whatever uh, experiences i shared and whatever mistakes i shared uh, your viewers watch through it and uh, take advice that what they have to do and what they don't have to do so yes again thank you so much for having me here it was great talking to you